Hello there, my name is Bruce Rain from Brankus Creations and thank you very much for joining me. I was just looking off into the distance here, just making sure that I did actually have with me the thing I plan to work on today. And I, it's right there, so we're all, we're all good. I, am, uh, I managed to plan that far ahead. It's a little bit of an impromptu one. I'd always planned to do this, but it is Monday morning here and of course Mondays are busy and uh, running around trying to get this all figured, but I've managed to managed to get myself here. I need to I need to regularly live stream, otherwise YouTube forgets I exist. And we don't want that happening. So, a quick hello. Uh, hello to GT, hello to Justin Morgan, Thomas Armstrong, John Mortz, uh, The Tinkerer. Uh, Steve is here, Mac84, Jay, The House of Moth, Garth Beagle, Isakil Blah, thank you very much for joining. I know this is not my normal live streaming time. I had planned to live stream yesterday, but hey, what happened? Joe, Joe from Joe's Computer Museum goes in and takes my time slot. Who does he think he is? Um, Starbuck Tech, hello. DJ Craze, hello. Apples have joysticks, apparently they do. This will be an interesting one because I don't really, I'm not really properly set up to test this, so I won't be able to test it much more than using a probably a multimeter to just let me know if it's uh, if the buttons are working because uh, I do have an Apple II C that appears to still be in pieces, even though it does work. But anyhow, that's another story. Um, I do have an Apple II C. I don't have the screen. It really would be difficult for me to set it up. I don't really have much in the way of... Actually, I mean, I've got a floppy emu. I suppose I could probably set it up and, and run it off a floppy emu. Um, but anyhow, I will, uh, we'll just we'll play it by ear. We'll just see what happens. Um, in terms of uh, new stuff, I got this the other day. This is a new UV light, which you can see it UVing all over me. Um, one really good way of showing that it's UV is uh, is this. This is my flux and it is the Amtec flux. There you go. And this is very specifically designed to illuminate in UV light. So you can kind of see it. It's, it's flaring out a little bit there. But anyhow, it is illuminating. It looks, it looks quite, quite striking. But anyhow, um, uh, I, as you know, I use my little UV laser, but there are times when I UV large portions of a board and I'd rather just plonk the board under a light and then go away and leave it for half an hour or something. And so this is what this is for. A pretty decent amount of light comes out of this, so I'm happy. There are more powerful ones out there. Oh, and I stuck it to this articulated arm so that I could, uh, excuse me, so that I can uh, sort of shine it down here on the table. So anyhow, that's that. Um, so far, pretty happy with that. I uh, haven't had to use it that much yet, though. I haven't had much ugly stuff to work on. Uh, okay, what do we got? What do we got? Oh, we've got more, more people turning up. Uh, whatever makes the stream five hours long. Yes, that will not be happening today. I regret to say, I know that Jay is looking for entertainment. He has a huge amount of repair work to do. And rather than live stream himself, he would rather watch other people live stream. So... Um, and uh, he would like me to just live stream indefinitely, but that's not going to happen because I have quite a bit of work to do as well. As I say, I have to keep these live streams happening and I try and make them interesting and I try and do new stuff, but at the end of the day, I can't keep them as long as a Mac 84 or something like that. One reason for that is that I stream at a very different time of the day. So I stream at this particular time to try and uh, make myself available to my US viewers. I know it's not great for my... Uh, my European viewers, but for my US viewers, I generally stream around about this time. And uh, uh, but this is right in the middle of my work day right now, so I will need to do works and things. Uh, did I say hello? I don't think I did. So did hang on. I've, I've now forgotten who I said hello to. So I could start saying hello to people twice. So, Garth, did I say hello to you? If I didn't, hello. John Mortz, did I say hello to you? I can't remember. <laughs> I think I did. Jeff Barnard, uh, Daniel Flackela, Flakela, Flakela, Flakela. I'm not sure. Um, we'll just call you Daniel. How about that? Or Dan. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, who else? 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 
Uh, JJ Brubaker is here, and Mike is here. Hello, Mike. Uh, and Michael Mulher, hello. Uh, flakes, there we go, that'll do. Well, it's interesting, this, this um, job that I'm working on, this, this joystick, has come to me from someone who has a very, very French name, and I am scared about uh, pronouncing it or mispronouncing it. I know his first name is uh, Romain, but uh, uh, the surname, uh, I think I know how to pronounce it, but I don't want to make a... Oh, wow, did you see that? Did my camera just change that all by itself? Love it when that happens. Actually received a notification. No, it's a, it must be a good day then. Um, I wonder if that's going to be an indication of what happens with the rest of this stream, whether I'm going to end up flicking between cameras constantly. That has happened before. It's easily resolved with restart of this computer, but I'd rather not have to restart it while, the, while we're midstream. So anyhow, we'll see what happens. Uh, I'll jump across here onto the top view. And you can see my messy, messy bench. Should have seen how messy it was before I started. Okay, this is the box. I don't think there's any personal information here or whatever it is I have squiggled out. So, me. Um, and so, okay, let me tell you a little bit of background story to this. This is... Uh, oh, hello, Romain. Oh, well, I'm, I, I, I tell you what, I'm going to say how I think your name should be pronounced in French, and you tell me if I get it even close. I think it should be Romain Bigard, but I could be wrong. So, um, and of course, I don't know, you might pronounce it in a, in a totally Aussie way. So, who knows? Um, so anyhow, I am going to, so anyhow, Romain is here, he's in the chat. I don't know how long he can stick around because it is, as I say, a work day here in, in Australia. But uh, it basically started with him saying, look, I've got this Apple II joystick. It's a genuine Apple one. Look, it's got an Apple logo and everything. And they're not particularly common in these, these parts. Um, and uh, he, it doesn't work properly. And the fault with it is, apparently, we will check that, well, one of the switches. Now, he's gone and, and done all the research, and he's bought the parts and everything. So he's bought the replacement switches. We're all good to go but he just wasn't confident about doing the soldering part himself. So I said, yeah, yeah, I'll give it a try. I did the stupidest thing in the world and, and agreed to something that I've never done before on a device I've never used before. So we'll, uh, we'll have a crack, we'll do our best. And of course, I, the big mistake I also made was then uh, uh, inviting that person to come and watch the live stream. So we could be up for all sorts of uh, joy and mischief. Uh, Vectorworks, hello, Vectorworks. Why does that mean something to me, Vectorworks? Vector works. That's just that made an alarm go off in my head. Hmm. Hmm. Pretty close. Okay. All right. That's good. I'll, close. Close. I'm happy with. Um, uh, we're not particularly good at pronouncing things in French here in Australia. Um, we uh, we have uh, there are a couple of things we do say. So, for instance, in America, I know they say um, fillet. Here in Australia, we say fillet. But then, by contrast, um, we say nougat. Whereas my understanding in America, they say nougat. Um, and then, of course, you've got niche and niche. Um, and, of course, what we do to the word crescent in, uh, in French. So, you know, the crescent-shaped bread products, which are sort of, I believe, should be pronounced somewhere in the vicinity of croissant. Uh, we don't say it that way, but we don't say it how it's spelt either. So we don't say croissant. We say croissant. So that's how we say it in Australia. Um, so, all right, how do I open this thing? I assume I have to take the feet off. Do I have to take the feet off? I, I, I cannot imagine there's any other thing than needing to take the feet off. I hope I can put the foot back on. Footsies. Um, I'll have a look. He did provide me with a little set of instructions here. They might even tell me how to open it up. How to fix. Oh, yeah, okay, I see, but I only need to take two of the foots off. So that's good. Uh, there we go, we go that way. And I need to, need to take that one, this one, and this one off. So footsie's coming off. Uh, okay, oh, hang on, look at this. Oh, shit, shit, it's going crazy. Um, I've got one that's not so cooperative too. Okay, Michael, good to hear that. Uh, I had a joystick, I had a joystick on an Apple IIe back in the day, but it was not a genuine Apple one. 
Um, this part here was kind of wider and brown and it had a button on the top. Uh, I remember that. I need to be on the lookout at the moment. I'm expecting a delivery today and I'm the only one at home. So I have to be aware of if uh, someone's turning up at the doorstep and I just heard the sound of doors closing before. So I'm just gonna have a look at the front door. Tap to go live. Got one of those doorbells with a camera. Oh, yeah, it's a delivery. Now, is he going to, is he going to wait for me? He's going to ring the doorbell and wait for me, or is he just going to drop it? Ding dong. No, he's just walking away. Sweet. He's just doing that good old thing where you just leave the package at the door and then you walk away. Sweet. So we good. I will go and pick it up in a moment, but I'll wait until the stream's been going for a little while. All right. So um, I need to try and get this off and I need to get it off without damaging it. So I'm going to use probably a spudger for that. Um, something plastic rather than something metal. Uh, and I sh really should have some magnifying glasses around here because I can't see without them. Particularly well anyway, not at close distances and I don't think I have them. I, they must have taken them all upstairs like some sort of crazy idiot. So now I do have to go upstairs at some stage. Anyhow, let's see if we can do this. Yep, here she comes. Okay. Oops, foot number one. Yes, I do know that the plural for foot is feet, but I like to get these things wrong all the time. Whoop, there we go. There's foot number two. So now we have two little screw holes here and they look like Philip's head. Come on, Philip. Are they are number two? Ah. Oh, it flicked over again. Cameras continue to disappear and reorganize themselves. Maybe something laying on the keyboard. No, it's it's not. It's uh, it is a USB related issue. Um, and it is easily solved by restarting the computer. And I'm I'm stupid for not restarting this um, when I came in because all the cameras were off and I switched them on and so it's just getting upset and I'm gonna say Garth thank you for the super chat I better not sing to thank you because otherwise I'll stop getting super chats so we won't do that all right so it's now looking like it's coming apart nice and easy um, so that's all good and we will just lift that away. What have we got? We've got a few things in there. Hmm. Let's see. Oh, that can't be good. Um, I think we may have a problem other than just... That looks like that's been done by hand. Like by someone afterwards. This doesn't look factory. Let me just have a look at this in the microscope for a second. Yeah, that's been added later. That's an interesting one, that one. I'm not sure the purpose. There's no solder there, and it's the same on this one as well. Um, so there's a yellow... Let me just show you this for a sec. I'll just pop this out of the way. And you guys have got to just tell me what you think. Tell me what you think. Um, so I'm going to keep an eye on the cameras and just see what happens, because if worse comes to worse, I will restart the computer, and I do believe... Well, actually, I've, I've no idea. I've never done that before with uh, Ecamm Live. Never, ever. So, I have two wires, specifically two wires. There's a yellow one here. Um, I'll see if I can zoom in a little bit here so I can demonstrate this better. Sorry, this camera keeps losing its focus. And sorry, my shorts are falling down. Ugh, no one needs to see my smalls today, do they? All right, so... There's a wire here, little, and it's not soldered on. Uh, and there's a wire here that's not soldered on, and it's not going anywhere either. Uh, now, I'm going to just temporarily put this onto back soon. I know it's, it's a real pain to do that so early, but I do not have my, um, my goggles, my magnifier goggles, and I cannot see anything. Um, I need to be able to inspect this a little bit closer. I want somewhere in between my actual... Uh, my normal eyes and the microscope and I don't have that at the moment so I'm going to press the back soon button I will be back as soon as I can it'll, it will literally only be like, it'll be like less than a minute um, and uh, just be aware that the back soon music does come a little loud so careful <laughs>
Well, I am glad I went and checked the front door because there were like five packages there. Uh, would have been very tempting for any passerby to just go, will they miss one? Whew, retro techie, hello. I'm back. Uh, equivalent series resistance. <laughs> <laughs> right, so let me have a look at this now with my uh, my magnify eye. So there's a yellow wire here. It's been soldered to the red wire here, and then just stuck on by hand to this here. Uh, now this is the adjustery part. So these, um, what we have here, here and here, they're some potentiometers also known as POTS or variable resistors, and they have, they are part of this mechanism here. So this is the, where you uh, make adjustments to where the, the, the center point is. So, so the idea is that when you use this joystick, you have this right in the middle, and you wanna make sure that when this joystick is right in the middle, that your, um, that it's, 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 it's giving a zero reading. It's not giving a, a reading in any, in any direction. Now, switches. Is it these is, are, is it these switches? Must be. Or is that actually is that variable resistor actually part of the mechanism? See, it shows what I know about joysticks. I'm just making this up as I go. So I assume it's these switches here. Clickety click. That we're looking to replace one of these, because I I am guessing. I know nothing about this joystick. All right, I get. I better go refer back to the instructions. I'm going back to the instructions. Let's see how fast I can read it, eh? There we go. Okay, that's a little bit too quick. I might need to slow down. I didn't quite get that. Uh, Right, so with your soldering iron, detach each wire and resist and connect to the switches. Remember when everything remember where everything is supposed to go. It's not very nice. I want you to remember. It's not the whole idea. Yeah, so it's basically one of these two switches. Um, there are some photos in this, and I may even look this up because these photos may give me some indication as to where these hangy wires are supposed to be. Um Right. Okay. All right. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to desolder all of these and so that we can remove these switches. And before I do that, I'm going to take a good old high-res photo. Hello, Joe. I was just saying before um, that... Uh, oh, hang on. Just bear with me one second. The... All right, there we go, sorry. Um, <clears throat> hang on, sorry. Who knew that I was just gonna suddenly end up um, having to do all of this stuff just as soon as I started the stream? It's like, it's annoying. I've become a terrible, terrible host now. Whoops, there we go. All right, so, so I just, I mean, my phone was just, it's just going off. Uh, taking a photo now is what I'm going to do. I'm going to get in here and take a series of photographs of the state this is in, currently in. I'll do it from lots of different angles. You won't regret that when you go to put things together. You'll be looking at a picture and you'll think, oh, does that go under or over? And then you just find a shot. Uh, uh, taking video also helps. I've done that too. All right. I've taken ample photos. Um, yes, I will replace both of these, even though apparently only one of them is an issue. Um, and now it is time for us to do some desolderage. So I'm going to get this cable up here. I'll just check on the chat, see if anyone's saying anything that I need to respond to. I was going to say, see if anyone's saying anything important, but I know. Uh, I know everything you guys are saying is important. Thank you. Apple II on Bruce's stream. Apple II forever. <laughs> yes. Yes, no, I don't do Apple, much Apple II stuff on here, do I? Even though 
you will see, if you watch any of my pre-recorded videos where I use this camera over here, you will always see little bits and pieces of an Apple IIc over there. So, And one of them even works. Uh, uh, so, uh, yes, it was a, an interesting... Uh, uh, yeah, so a couple of things. I should actually mention there's another video being released by... Uh, Jay from the House of Moth. Feel free to put a link in there if you want to. Uh, it's more about the um, open course stuff. And uh, I haven't actually had a chance to watch more than the first few minutes, but um, it is, uh, yeah, it's a video uh, sort of ongoing, uh, sort of, I guess, kind of like a follow up or providing more information of the uh, previous open core video. So anyone who's interested in open core on their uh, Macs, check that video out. Um, and of course, uh, Joe, who live streamed yesterday, um, um, he uh, was working on an SE30 that uh, was ending up giving him some grief with the SCSI, when, which if it was mine, the next thing I would do would be replace the SCSI chip, but that's the, the part that he can't actually do at the moment because he doesn't have a spare chip yet. Uh, uh, and then looked at a, what was the second machine? I missed out what it actually was, but it had a PLCC chip ripped off and it took every single pad with it. And so you then had to go in and make little um, traces and pad replacement type things for it. That was, uh, so check that one out if you want to see some interesting stuff. That one went for like four hours, didn't it? Gosh. Um, right. Updating and repatching open core legacy patch. There you go. All right. Shush chicken. One of my chickens making a lot of noise. I know which one it is. It's the same one. The same one always makes that noise. Uh, I'm just trying to think about the best way to hold this. It's good to plonk it on something where I can have the joystick poking through the middle. Uh, that's not high enough. Come on. Come on, think. Think. Use your brain, Rain. What have you got? What do you got? What do you got? Um... A jar? That might do it. A jar with some screws in it. I take the lid off. Can I plonk that inside there? Yeah, that works. That'll do. It'll work enough. Right, so we're going to whip away some of these soldered bits. I'm going to be doing this as carefully as I can. I do not want to melt anything or damage anything. I dare say that... Do, do, do. I dare say that these uh, wires are going to be bent over, not just soldered. So I'll have to get the solder off and then unbend them. Not too fussed about what happens to the switch, because that is what we're replacing. But everything else I would like to remain intact. Ouchie, I'm burning my fingers. Yep. Okay. Give it a good yank. There's one yellow wire. It's going to be interesting. This is this this is an interesting. I thought this would be like just. This is going to take me five minutes. And I'm done, but no. It's actually quite challenging. See, this is one of the wires that's not soldered on properly. It's soldered on here, but not soldered on there. So I find really curious. Because there's a little blob of solder on the other one. Oh man, this is so weird. Let me get look up this and see if I can find any pictures of the inside of this. Kate here, hello Kate. Uh let me go this way. Maker. Excellent. Good, good, good. We're all we're working on uh, figuring out stuff to do with. Uh, um... Oh, did anyone see a spider just go across the table? It's a white tail spider too. Just a little one there. Keep going. Yep. Travel. Safe passage. There you go. Um, uh, Frederick Raymer. Hello. 
Uh, I was going to say something. Oh, yes, uh, there's stuff going on with trying to get hold of the beige-coloured filament for 3D printers. So, well, it's, it's, it's platinum, it's not beige, but, you know, everyone likes to say beige, even if they're wrong. Um, right, so I'm going to look up this website. Damn technology. Okay, all right, I'm going to look up this website, and I'm going to bring it up on the internets. Um, new. There we go. How to fix an Apple joystick when the button, I'll start with that. Joystick when the button, and then where are we? No, no. Yep, here we go. Got pickies. Are they high res? Oh, far out there, not. <laughs> they are wow. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, this one might tell me, show me what I need, but I'm going to have to zoom the bejeebas out of it. Okay. All right. Oh, look at that is a beautiful photo. Thank you very much, Jay. Big shout out to Jay there who just sent me this link. And that photo is absolutely perfect. So what does that show me? If we spin it around that way, it shows me that that is where the wire should be, but it darn should be soldered. And that is where the wire should be, but it darn should be soldered. So I think someone has replaced the wire at some stage and not soldered it on, but we will, we will solder it. We have the tools. I was going to say and talent and quote Ghostbusters, but I thought, no, nah, no, I won't do that. Do, do. Jay to the rescue. It's nice when you have people, you know, sort of doing your research for you while you're, uh, while you're working away. <sighs> Jessica Ryan, hello. How are you today? Okay, let's just get a bit of solder onto this. Okay, so that one is slightly less wobbly now. now. Someone has clearly done some repairs on this at some stage. I'm not saying it's the the owner of this. It, it, it's it's impossible to know. I mean, just given the fact that the owner wasn't particularly that, that is Romain. I should say his name, even though Romain was not happy to do this repair himself. Um, he may or may not have had something to do with what's going on here. Just want it to be a little bit neater. Because, because it's me. It's got to be neat. Apart from my desk. Which is a train wreck. There we go. Just going to put a little dob of... Uh, flux on there because this is I'm working with solder here that is getting all a bit crunchy there we go that'll allow me to get a lovely joint oh that's much nicer Pretty. okay are the cameras still changing again the cameras only freak out when Bruce looks away very suspicious <laughs> oh look it did it again I saw it that time. I saw it that time. <clears throat> um, so let me try something here. I'm not using the microscope today, so I'm just going to disconnect it. And we'll just see what happens um, if, uh, if, it can, if it figures it out. Um, let's try... Whoops, that's not, that's not what we want. Let's try... Whoa, no, that's... that's nope, whoa, ha! Ah, nope, that's not what I want. Uh, why can't I get that one horizontal? Here we go. Classic. Ah, look at that. Ah, look at that. Uh, this is Ecamm Live that I use. I don't have the same control that you would in OBS. I don't have the ability to like, just take my picture and just crop a little piece. No. 
Which camera is it? It's like it's this camera. Maybe I should disconnect that one, eh? Shall we? Because that seems to be the camera that's giving me all the grief. So I'll plug this one back in. Uh, and we will go to... I have to follow this cable wherever it goes. It's been a good one today, hasn't it? Uh, first, I forgot my glasses. Then I'm having camera troubles. Okay, so disconnect this one. And... Yeah. Oh. Okay. Right, we'll keep an eye on it now, and we'll just see what happens. If it keeps doing it, well, all I can say is... Smash that like button. Um, okay. Jav Master, hello. Rudy's Retro Intel, hello. Action Retro, hello. Sean is here, hello. <clears throat> okay, all right. So, um, so we're basically looking at an Apple II or an Apple joystick from an Apple for use with an Apple II. And I have a few weird things going on here. Now, one of the weird things is that some weird stuff's been happening with my cameras, but we'll just see what happens with that now. I'm watching it out of the corner of my eye to see whether it does any flickery, but I'm hoping we've got it solved. I've pretty much disconnected every, disconnected and reconnected everything, so it might be good now. But we won't count our chickens until we're sure. Now, I'm going to... But the, another weird thing we've got here is we had some wires inside this joystick that weren't soldered in... Oh, I just saw it. You saw it, and look what's happened to the camera. Wow. Do, do. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, hang on. Sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. Okay, I've, uh, I've got to sort out my camera here somewhat. Look at it. Look at how terrible it is here. Uh, let's go to that one. Let's go to that one. And we'll go to... Uh, that one. There we go. We're better now. It's also darn weird. Uh, I just don't know what's going on. I'd say it, it's something that I know I can fix with a restart, but I, I, I've just never done that. I've never done a restart of the computer mid um, uh, eCam live stream. It might just pick up and keep going, or it might consider the stream finished and I could be in all sorts of trouble. Right, so these are these little wires here. They were not those yellow wires get hard and break. Well, now here's the really interesting thing: they were not soldered on to the pots. So I mean, they were just they were they were soldered at the other end, but not on the pots. They were just bent over. There was no solder, not a single trace of solder there whatsoever. So I cannot tell you what the story is there. I can't imagine that Apple does manufacturing with. Um, uh, uh, you know, sort of just bending the wire over. The other thing is that these, some of the yellow wires, not all of them, oh no, I, I was going to say something there, but I'm completely wrong, so I won't say that. I won't say something that is incorrect. Um, so that's just very odd. So I have now soldered them on. They are now a permanent fixture, but for whatever reason, um, they weren't soldered. And I'm, I'm, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But we are going to continue with what we were doing here. Uh, again, we're working on an Apple II or an Apple joystick. Um, uh, and it is a, it is for use obviously with an Apple II. Uh, it is a joystick that was made by Apple. There were plenty of non-Apple joysticks made at the time. Um, and uh, but this was one of the genuine Apple ones. And of course, these are the ones that are more desirable these days. I mean, don't get me wrong, any sort of joystick for the Apple II, 
that comes out these days. I reckon people would jump on it if you put it up on eBay, but if it is a genuine apple, you're definitely going to get more interest because these are a little bit... Well, they were very expensive, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. But I think they were quite dear, so... Um, you know, most people were going with the non-apple to save, save a few quid. All right. So we have now got one button completely released. Nearly. There we go. Um, so part of me thinks that I should probably just take it out. I am terrified of this plastic. Look at it. I mean, it's actually the button is being held in by plastic tension kind of thing. So I have to bend it back to get it out. And that, oh no, it doesn't, yeah, ah, it's easy. He says, ah, there we go. So we've got a little spring inside there, and then we've got the orange button. Is that spring? No, that spring is not affixed. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to grab that spring. I'm going to put it somewhere secure. Because, oh, bald head. Whee! Um, I'm going to put it somewhere secure because we uh, I don't want to lose it. So that's one switch out. That's what it looks like. Biggity bam. Let's, we'll put that to one side. And then we'll get the other switch out. So a little bit more of uh, removing these things. This isn't my normal... Um, what do you call it? Uh, uh, surface mount stuff that I normally do. God, one of my chickens is kind of upset about something. I apologise I haven't looked back at the chat for a little while. I'm a little bit concerned about all this craziness going on with the cameras. Whoa, what did I just do then? Clicked on the wrong thing is what I did. God, look at this chicken. Will you shut up? Trina is here. Hello, Trina. Okay, what's being said here? Enzo is here. Hello, Enzo. With the Sombrero Galaxy as his avatar. Okay. Mr. McIntosh is here. Hello. And Nano Creations. I don't think I've said hello to you. Uh... I do have a capacitor ferry, and the capacitor ferry does take things away. Are there any gamers in this chat? Mm -hmm. I suspect there are a few. I'm not a big one, but... Um, Joe Williams, hello. Uh, yes, I can't say I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm that much of a gamer. I have played games, and I've gone through periods in my life where I've played quite a lot of games, but I, don't, I tend to play a very specific style of game. Um, if I am playing, say, something like a first-person shooter, I get frustrated very, very quickly. And typically one of the first things that I do, one of the first things that happens when I am playing a first-person shooter is I go for the cheats so that I don't keep dying. Because I really like to just walk around and, and, you know, and finding things and adventure and wandering around. But the whole dying all the time just kind of gets a bit old for me. So, um... So that's kind of me when it comes to gaming. I do like the strategy style games where, you know, you have to find things and you have to solve puzzles and all those sorts of things and such and stuff and things. Come on. There we go. So I've taken that little, little happy resistor shapey thingy off. And then we've got this little yellow wire. Hello, little yellow wire. Pop you there because we're going to need you later. And then we're going to take out this second button. Bouton. That's uh, French for button. Bouton. Uh, Pousser le bouton. Or appuyer le bouton. <clears throat> um, okay. Just basically, once again, proving to the world that I do not speak French. Okay. Um, okay, well, we've got the buttons out. I guess what we do now is we have a look at them and see if uh, if they actually work. Because if these buttons are working fine, then we sort of think, well, are we wasting our time with this repair? And what are we going to do? How are we going to test it? What what on earth could we use for us to test it? I wonder if we could maybe use a Kai Wheats KM601 multimeter with its beautiful big color screen 
an incredibly budget price, you'll find that this is a fantastic multimeter for someone on a budget. Beautiful display. If you're interested in buying one, you may even find a link in the description for where you can actually get hold of one. Um, and if you're thinking, no, no, even that's too expensive for me, well, then you can look out because I will be doing a giveaway soon. As soon as I get everything organized, it's been so darn busy. I'll be doing a giveaway soon where you can actually win one of these. So, so there. Now, what I'm actually looking for are these. There's one. This is my croc clips. Let's go on to my... Uh, here we go, here's the other one. So these, uh, these just slide onto my standard uh, multimeter probes. These are really cheap and easy to get just about anywhere. You just probably pick them up on eBay or wherever. And they just slide onto standard probes. Yeah, multimeter probes. If I can find it, there we go. I was going to say something there, but I thought, no, if I say that, Jay will say that's what she said. So I'm not going to say it. So, um, right. So now I have my little multimeter probes with uh, little crock clips on them so I can grab hold of things. And I want to put that there. I'm going to put this into beepity beep beep mode, also known as continuity mode. And we'll pop that there. Just bear with me a second. Sorry about that, folks. Um, so I have got my little uh, multimeter-y thingy here now. I'm going to attach it to these points, and we're going to press the button and see what it does. Uh, whoop, oh, that's always on there by the looks of it. I have no idea which pins I should be using, so that's on. Is it meant to be on? All right, come on experts, which pins should I be using to test whether this is, this is working properly or not? It was Mrs. Branches. She did just come here and uh, she's about to head out. Just wanted to check a couple of things before she headed off, so. Um, so uh, if I was to be testing this switch here, I mean, is it stuck on? Maybe it is actually just stuck on. So if I were to put that on that pin there, and put that on a pin on the opposing side, it's just saying it's on. And that sort of seems like not right. Same there, stuck on. Let's try the other one, see what we get. Because I'm doing this all off camera, which is very, very useful. So let's try that one there, and that one there. Same. What the hell? I don't know. No, that's stuck on too. Um, so am I going diagonally oppose it? Nope. I don't understand. Ah, okay, now I've got it. So it's those two there. It's a little bit sticky, but it is doing. It's not necessarily what I'd consider awesome. This one, diagonally opposite. That's sort of working as well. I, I kind of don't really consider these to be uh, super responsive. Um, so I suspect they're just a little tired. But of course, we could also have problems associated with the fact that those yellow, those yellow wires weren't connected properly. That's probably the cause, would be my guess. 
because there was a wire inside that just simply was not connected. Adam McGee, hello. I see the battery generator multimeter that gave you a month. They, uh, that gave you a month on one set of batteries. Well, it's still going though. Uh, they're, it's showing that they're low, but it's still definitely going. Uh, and I should also mention and point out that um, not all multimeters cop as much use as mine do. So, um, you know, we do have to always keep in mind that we're talking about a, um, an entry level a multimeter here. We're not talking about one coming in at, you know, ridiculously high price here. This is one that is, is a, you know, a, a very inexpensive multimeter with lots and lots of features. And I use this multimeter a lot. So I'm not necessarily a good case, um, you know, sort of, uh, sort of case study on, uh, on battery usage. But having said that, it is still working. It hasn't run out yet. It hasn't actually stopped working because of the batteries. So I definitely don't consider it to be the batteries to be not working yet. But when they do go, I will let you know and let you know how long it's taken. Right, so we've got ourselves some new switches here and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to just connect this up and see what happens. Oh, that's so much quicker. Yeah. It, I don't think there's anything wrong, even though the switch may not have been the fault, I really don't think there's anything wrong with changing the switches in this because just the immediacy with which I get the beep when I press the button now, compared to the old ones, quite significant. Right, so what happens now? I guess they're probably easier to solder in situ because they were certainly easier to unsolder in situ. So let's put the... Uh, Let's put the springs back in and see. And of course, we do also have to remember with the multimeter, we cannot seriously expect to have a great big illuminated screen like that um, and not have, you know, sort of a reasonable amount of power consumption from it. And we are just using, oops, we are just using a cheap set of alkaline lines at the moment. I'll be interested to see how it goes with some rechargeable batteries. Um, right, so we've got our little, oh look at this, switches are made by Omron. Uh, Omron also make um, blood pressure monitors, just in case anyone wasn't sure, or as they're also known, sphygmonometers. Sphygmonometers, the things that check your blood pressure. Um, The original switch has still worked, but not enough throw to work when installed in the unit. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, so so one of the things that happened with this, um, uh, Adam, was that um, when I opened this up, there were two wires that weren't soldered on one end. One wasn't soldered on two ends. One wasn't soldered on one end. And one of them had just completely come away from from where it was meant to be connected so i think there's a fairly high likelihood that um the problem is actually related to that wire not being connected so i think this will probably this will probably fix it assuming i put it together correctly and as to whether i do that or not well that's anyone's guess so let's put this back it's nice when you can get little replacements for these things even in this day isn't it always brings me joy when I manage to buy stuff and it's like brand new and it's stuff that's going in like 30 plus year old computers and stuff like that. And this would be more than 30, I guess. This is probably, I suppose it, it could, could be 80s, but it could even be late 70s, I suppose. Does it have a date on it? Apple computer, 20525. Mariani Avenue, Cupertino, California. They ain't there no more. Don't look for them there, they're not there. Or they might be. They might have something there, but certainly not the big one. Right, so now we're gonna connect these wires up again. And uh, for that, I am going to be going to my trusty picatures. Okay. Javier, where are you? What questions did I have? Did I have questions? 
Um, okay, well, hang on, hang on. Uh, uh, remember to help what the problem with the joy... Okay, so the problem with the joystick was that one of the buttons didn't work. That was it. So the customer, um, he said, I, I, one of the buttons doesn't work, so I've bought some replacement buttons. Uh, these are the replacements here. So I bought some replacement buttons. Uh, I'm not confident about doing the soldering myself. Would you be happy to have a look at it? I said, yes, yeah, sure, I'd be happy to have a look at it. So I opened it up um, and we have now taken the old buttons out and put new ones in. And I have tested these with a the multimeter and although I don't consider them particularly responsive, they did seem to work. You know, when I pressed the button, there was a definite lag between when I pressed the button down and when I got the beep on the multimeter. So there, there was, so, you know, working, but not necessarily in the peak condition. When I opened this up initially, when I first opened it up, this wire here was not connected. This one, this yellow wire. It was wrapped around this pin there, just like not soldered, wrapped around it, and this end was disconnected altogether. Um, this one here was wrapped around that end there, but soldered on this end. And it was still in, in place, but it wasn't soldered, so I wouldn't consider that to have the best contact there either. Um, so I don't know if this wire being disconnected would result in one of these buttons not working, but I just thought I would, I'll throw it out there. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll call on your brain. Um, so yeah. <laughs> so I'll I'll start looking at soldering this back together. But in the meantime, I'll patiently wait to see if Javier has. Uh, uh, that's why it gets sticky, dry, and break. Okay, yeah, I mean, I know you mentioned that, but they really did not look to have one single iota of solder on them. I mean, not a skerrick. Not even, like... I mean, they really did look like they were looped around there, you know, with no, with no solder at all. I mean, I've seen plenty of cracked solder joints, and there's residual solder left behind, and there was none, absolutely none whatsoever. It was just kind of looped around there. Um, so it's just an odd one, a very odd one. I, I suspect someone has been in here before, put it that way. Um, I can hear my washing machine telling me it's time to hang out the washing. I'm ignoring it because I'm not going to hang out the washing mid uh, live stream. That would be, that would be very rude. All right, so let us... Let's put this back together. I'm going to grab my little picture because I took a photo of this while it was all together. Uh, photos. Of course, there's a rather nice photo on the interwebs as well. But this one looks like it's going to do me quite nicely. Right, I'm going to start off with my little yellow wire, which is over here. And this one needs to live between that and that. I'll just get some of the excess solder away from that. It'll just make it easier for me to put it in position. There we go. Looking good. Looking good. Oopsie. I will be monitoring the chat when I can, when I can look up to see whether I'm going to get to uh, cop a bit of rough from Javier if I do something wrong. I will do my best not to do something wrong. Replace them with new yellow wires. Well, what? What? Um, what have I got? Hang on. Hang on. 
That's way too thick. This is where all my wires are. It's where all my wires used to be. God, I can't see anything. Out you go. Found red one. <laughs> There's black one. Ah, there's the yellow. Found the yellow. Ah, oh, God, that is a dumb place to put it. Well done, rain. Okay, yellow wire. If we are going to be doing this properly, and I get the feeling that if I'm going to have Javier watching, I'd better bloody do it properly. Ah. Uh, Ethernet cable might do nicely. Well, I think that's the same issue because the Ethernet cable is uh, uh, very stiff. I mean, I think we're looking for something that with a little bit more flex in it. If I'm sort of interpreting um, Javier's uh, uh, sort of comments there. Let's probably get a little bit longer. There we go. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right. So we are listening to the expert. That is what I like to do because. I think it just makes sense, don't you? Just tinning the uh, the ends of the wire. I'm just hoping it'll make it a little bit easier so they don't fray while I'm wrapping them around. Um, so off comes this little bit of wire. I think I'll sort it. Oh, that's the multimeter telling me he's about to switch him off. And I will save him the trouble and switch him off for him. Off. Good night. Mm -hmm. Here we go. So there's one on there. <laughs> I mean, my two C does work. I just haven't fired it up in a long time. Can I? I cannot believe I just said that. Someone who works in vintage vintage computers that I actually had the stupidity to say it does work, I just haven't switched it on in a long time. I mean, how many times has that bloody been said? This worked when I put it away. Oopsie. Yeah. Yeah, geez, I'm doing an ugly job here. I mean, it's going to be safe as houses, but it don't look, doesn't look too crash hot. Got myself some new side cutters the other day. Where'd I put them? Where are they? Old ones were not meeting in the middle terribly well anymore, so I grabbed some new ones so I could do my snippity snippy, and I can't find them. They are just gone. Oh, God, what are they doing up there? Ugh. Oh, sad Mac, hello there. Whoopsie. Whoops, dropped. Oh, no, I don't know what that is. If the 2CI, 2C is in a dry location, it'll still work 30 years later. Imagine... Imagine that the location isn't super dry. Let's, let's call the location dry-ish. Okay. 
that's good. Don't like the look of that. I want a bit of solder in, a bit more solder in there. There we go. Then you've got problems. No, no, that's not what I want to hear. I want to hear all sorts of reassurance that the 2CI, 2C, sorry, will be fine. I have another one, so I guess if something goes wrong with one, I can steal parts. Assuming those parts aren't gone on that one as well. No. I bet you, I bet you the 2C still works. Ah, God, I'm warm. I might turn this thing on. It's really muggy here in, at the moment in Sydney. It's not particularly hot, but it is hot, uh, very muggy. There we go. Chilling. That's better. Right, so that's one wire. God, this isn't going to be a quick stream, is it? Back to the photos. So that one, and then now we've got this stupid little resistor thing. It bothers me. I'm going to put that on next. I just don't like the way this is made. I mean, look at it. This little weird resistor thing, you know. What the? We're going to put that there in, in a way that it doesn't actually then touch the other thing. Well, that's doable. There we go. And it'll definitely need some bending out of the way, but I'll solder it down first. All the memory can go at any second. Yep. Uh, the, uh, it's interesting. I, I nearly had two working 2Cs. Uh, I had one that was fully working and one that was sort of working and had some problems. During my steps to diagnose that 2C, I accidentally sent 12 volts down the 5 volt rail. That's not something I do often, but when I do it, I'm never happy about it. There we go. Okay. I'm going to push this out of the way a bit because I just don't want there to be any chance of that touching anything it shouldn't. Now, having said that, when I sent 12 volt down the 5 volt roll, I think it just killed one of the RAM chips, or maybe some of the RAM chips. I could probably go in and fix it if I wanted to devote the time to it. Uh, what have we got going on here? So the yellow one out of there goes to here. This one goes onto that one with the red one, by the looks of it. So let's start with... So I believe... Oh, this... Oh, that's right. I've got to change the wire because I've been told, I've been told to use better wire. So here I am doing as I'm told. Okay. Don't anyone say that I don't cooperate. Ping. Ping. I have a 2C monitor as well, but it's not here. It's in Melbourne, and I need to go and get it. Um, it was available for sale in Melbourne, and I got my um, brother-in-law to go pick it up, and he did, and they've still got it, because I haven't had a chance to get down there, because there's been this whole COVID thing, and interstate travel hasn't been very easy during that. So, uh, although I can go there now, I just have not yet. Oh, is that another delivery? Let me just have a look at the doorbell again. Just heard the sound of a fairly noisy car in front. Live. Looking at the outside. Nope, nobody there. I'm safe. So, yes, as I mentioned, I got a delivery today and I'm quite pleased about it. I got a little um, PCI um card that allows me to stick a little m2 
uh, what do they call them, sled kind of thing, uh, SSD into my Mac Pro. So I should, in theory, have much faster data transfer on my Mac Pro sometime tomorrow. And not only that, uh, I've gone from a one terabyte SSD to a two terabyte SSD. So get a little bit more space on my system disk. I have a squazillion other drives connected to that computer, but this is just the startup drive. Um, just checking you're still with us, Harvey. I haven't driven you mad. I haven't sent you away. You haven't left in disgust. Uh, photos. So, yep, okay, that goes there with the red one from the cable. Okay, so this red one here from the cable goes there. Just tighten that up a little bit. I've got a pair of pliers that's perfect for this, that'll do. Pop that there. That goes there. And then that goes there as well also too. One. I might just tighten that up a little bit. Two. Oh, come on. Stay there, you. I won't tell you again. He's still there. Good. Excellent. Uh, okay. Because of uh, the sorts of computers that I collect, whenever I go to say 2C, I almost always end up saying 2CI. Um, interestingly, on the weekend, I picked up a Macintosh 2VX. Uh, I already have two of them. I do not need three but it was going for a very, very good price, so I thought I should grab it. And it was quite funny because the guy was actually saying, oh, you know, uh, sorry, I, I, you know, I've, I've, there's been a delay, I've got to put a new hard drive in it. And I'm like, Pfft. the first thing you'd, I'd do is gonna take the hard drive out and stick a SCSI 2SD or a blue SCSI in it, so don't worry too much about the hard drive. Uh, right, so we're getting there. Now we need the yellow one from the cable, the main cable, to go to this one. Like this. We're getting here, folks. We are getting here. It's uh, it's all happening. I'm just mentioning for anyone who might be watching this, who has perhaps watched some of my soldering tutorials. Um, you see when I'm um, soldering these, I'm actually feeding the solder in as I go. That's because I'm utilizing the um, uh, the flux inside the solder. The solder has a flux core and I'm using that, I'm actually melting that flux as the solder melts and so I'm utilizing the flux in the core there. So I don't need any additional flux while I'm doing this. Um, right, so that's that. Let's have a look at this side. Here we go, goes a nice picture of that side. So we have the white one goes there. Out. Come on. 
always like to just test the limits. How close can I get before I burn myself? Ah, oh, that'll do. I got enough of it off. White one goes, oh yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. There we go. Ooh, that smells. All right, now as far as I can tell, that's it. Right, we've got that there, we've got that there, that there. I mean, it looks like everything's done. I'll wait for, uh, what was I? White is button zero. Button zero. So, let's go and, oh, hang on. Where's that wire go? Well, we never knew. We never, because that was the one that was never soldered in the first place. So where does this guy go? Actually, I, I can, I won't. I won't, I won't, I won't impose upon you for everything. I can look at this photo. Oh crap. That's my microphone. Oh crap. So that one goes from here. It looks like it goes to that second pin. So this is the one that was never sold in, in the first place. So it looks like this goes from here to here. Like that, I think. But of course, this is one we're gonna to have to replace with new yellow wire, because we're doing it properly. Yeah, yeah, that looks right. So I'm going to jump back here to the old, uh, this one, there we go, goes next to white, yep, good, confirmation, mm. Mm. what if there's a way I could rig this up? to an oscilloscope to test whether it's working. You know, like just connect them up to particular pins or something like that. And then just get readings on the oscilloscope as to whether it's, uh, it's working. I mean, I will grab the 2C, but I just need to set expectations. There really is absolutely zero chance that I will be able to test this on the 2C. Uh, certainly not in this live stream. I hate to think how long it would take me to set, rig something up with a screen. Because apart from everything else, that's one thing I don't have down here. There's a screen that will work on that. None, there are none here. How many screens? None screens. And without a screen, it's going to just be like an Altair. I can check connectivity. Mm, that's something. That is better than nothing. Let's go with my new wire into there. Clicky click. Bit of solder I'm using Kester solder here. I have to say, I do quite like Kester solder. One of the tricks for me with solder and soldering in general is um, getting solder to do what you want it to do. That's the trick. That's the trick. Get it to do what you want to do.
looking good. Okay, so, a little bit melty, never mind. Melty, melty. Right, so I'm going to just have a quick little inspector uni. I think we're all connected. So, I'm going to grab this like this, just like this, like this, like this. Put it this way, I have complete confidence this is all going to be fine in terms of ongoing. So there we go, just bring it a little bit closer to camera there, so we've connected everything. So all the little pins of the buttons now are connected to a wire. I've got a lovely clickety-click action going on there. Your 7-inch LCD has video or AV. Yeah, I think you're about to make a liar out of me, aren't you? What have we got? Well, well, oh, okay, it goes in there. I don't have a plug for that. I can see it here. It's one of the ones that goes in through a, um, a little, like a headphone jack, a little, what do they call it, quarter inch, eighth inch, whatever, headphone jack into there. Um, and I don't think I even have one. Well, I probably do, but who knows how long it would take me to find it. Mm. It could all be moot anyway. And apart from everything else, I have no systems on. I'm just, trying, I'm just imagining how long it would take me to set up the 2C to work so that I could test this. I'm just thinking about that. All right, now, okay. Okay, hang on. Uh, is it kill blah? I've got a question here. What do you guys streamers specifically use to stream with? It does vary greatly, and it varies greatly on uh, what you want to do. If you're in a situation where, we, where you are wanting to use multiple cameras, um, then I would recommend something like OBS uh, if you want something free, because that's, that is an open source option, so you can just download it and start using it. Bit of a learning curve going on, but to be honest, it didn't take me too long to start streaming with that. It was very flaky on the computer I was using it on, but I suspect that if I was to do it on this one now, this newer computer that I use, it would probably be fine. So OBS, or Open Broadcaster what, System, OBS, that's a good one. The one I use at the moment is a thing called Ecamm Live. And one of the reasons why I use that is I'm in the Mac world and there are limited options with OBS in the Mac world. If you're on the Windows world, it's a different story. There are lots of plugins and stuff like that. But one of the things I wanted to be able to do was just quickly and easily be able to go like this and just put your comment up here with your avatar just and have that part of the stream so that if I'm talking about something I can I can just you know I can have it on screen while I'm talking about it um, and the Mac version of OBS unless someone has done something about it at the time that I was using it didn't have anything that would enable me to do this same with the Super Chats. When the Super Chats come in, I want to acknowledge them. I want to put them up on screen and say, hey, thank you for this, blah, blah, blah. You know, and so um, that was, that's one of the reasons why I changed. Now, one of the tools that you can use is StreamYard. Now, these, these come with, a, there's a free version of StreamYard and then there's a paid version of StreamYard. Um, but StreamYard's not particularly good with multiple cameras. And as you can see, I've got three cameras here and I'm actually planning on adding a fourth as well. So, yeah, that's a bit of an issue. Issue. Um, so I went with Ecamm Live, and it does cost money. It costs, it's just a, there is a subscription fee. It's not ridiculous amounts of money, especially when you consider that what I'm doing here does actually make money. Not much money, but it does make some money, so I can just consider that a cost of doing it. <sighs> what? The SE30 from last night is now working great. Had another bad trace, removed the chip, fixed a couple of things, boom, done. See? 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 That's all it takes. Find those broken traces and fix them. It's what happens so many times when people actually say to me, they come to me and they say, oh, I've got this computer and I've repaired it, I've, re re I've recapped it or something and it's still not working, what next? And it's like, well, you have to inspect it very closely and try and find a broken trace somewhere because chances are that's what the cause is. That's nine, nine times out of ten, that's what the cause is. So that's what you have to do. You've you got to track it down. That's one of the reasons where microscopes come in super handy because it makes it easier to find that stuff. Right, these are the old three wires that I've removed. These are bad wires, bad wires. All right, so quick question. Javier, can you hear me? 
Can you please tell me, should I do anything to test this before I put it together, put it back together? Should I be doing something specific for testing? Um, should I, you know, do something? Square that goes that way. It's a square bit. Put that on the square bit. See that sure cram the wires into this little section here, don't I? Crammy, crammy, cram. See, stay, stay. Thank you. All right. Okay, I think we can make that work. He's left. I've offended him. He's gone. Oh no. I just hadn't scrolled down. I'm sitting here staring at all this chat that's just not here. Uh, someone trying to ring me. Bad luck. And we go. Da -da -da. The House of Moth. Where else will you get a 45 minute puck mouse cleaning video? Same as self promotion. Yes, go and check it out. If anyone wants to watch someone very, very carefully. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so, so in terms of continuity, let's check. So, oh God, I've got to find out where these go. So, why, okay, well, okay. Well, I can test continuity certainly from, from, let's say, for argument's sake, from here, whoopsie. I'm going to put that there, and that's going to go from there to there, to there, to there. So, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna connect this to this. And in theory, I should get different, I should get different uh, continuity based on which button I'm pressing, I would think. I've got zero there. No, okay, I'm clearly not doing the right thing there. That going across there, that going across there, that going across there. there. No, I'm, I am definitely not doing the right thing here. My brain was saying that I was doing the right thing, but I'm not doing the right thing. No, okay, so that, that, no. Um, did I read your comments? Well, it depends. I have read several of your comments, but I don't know which comments, because you have to keep in mind that from my perspective, these comments burn by pretty darn fast. Um, and then finding your earlier ones will be a little bit difficult. I know you just said continuity, but I didn't actually see. You can check connectivity. I saw that one. I did see that one. Here we go. Uh, But in terms of actually, um, in terms of actually uh, what goes to what, you know, as in what, you know, what I'm actually testing in, in which particular location, I am, uh, I'm afraid I have, no, I have not seen anything appear to that, to that effect. So, anyhow, that's, I'm going to just do, look. Oh. I'm just going to check and see if the switch even works. That's a start. Yeah, cool. It's good. But uh, yes, I mean, my th my thought was that that I might be able to actually like check through these pins here whether I'm actually getting something happening. But I don't know. I don't know the layout of that connector or anything like that. So it makes it a little bit difficult. I know the switch is working. I know that everything is connected correctly. Um, so, I mean, unless there is some sort of, you know, magical put this on pin one and this on pin two and then press the button, I think we'll just have to, uh, we'll just have to run with it. Um, but, uh, yeah. Well, that's done. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Uh, 
Just ca catching up on the chat here. White, okay. White, one, green. Oh, here we go. Look at that. I'm going to better copy this. I'll put that up. White, one, green, blue, two, brown, five, black, eight, orange. Sorry. Oh, you were trying to put returns in between those, weren't you? So white, one, green, blue, two, brown, five, black, eight, orange, seven. Okay, cool. I got it. Um, yep. All right. It's uh, one of the things that good old uh, YouTube doesn't do is... It doesn't uh, allow you to put returns in comments. So, we have... Oh, crap. There's no freaking numbers in this. Which way is one? Well, there's one way to find out, isn't there? Mm -mm. Oh, I should put this under. onto beepity beep mode. Okay, so that must be one there. Yep. Okay. White one. And green blue is two. Sorry. No, white one. Green blue is two. Green blue is two. Green blue. Green. Hey. Eh? I don't have a green blue. I've got a purple. All right. Hmm. I don't have a green-blue. God, it's hard for me to do this and read at the same time. Green slash blue too. Yep, well, I don't have a green slash blue. So, that's a... That's a non. Uh, then... One, two, three, three, four, five. Five... Is brown? Brown. Come on, get under there, you thing. Not get anything there. I'll tell you what I'll do, I'm going to hook that there. Okay, that's three. All right, so three is going to brown for me. And hold on. Okay, I'm waiting. <laughs> now, having said that, I am actually getting, I, I can still go through and test the continuity in here just through process of elimination. So it was brown was going to, was that three? White. White was going to one. It was red going to. Assuming I'm counting in the right direction. I can never remember which direction around it is. What? Yeah, I am doing it the right way. One, yeah, I am doing it the right way. It's left to right when you're looking at the, the um, male side, and it's right to left if you're looking at the female side. Uh, okay, so red. That's going to pin two. And... Oh, hey, what? Yellow one? What? Yellow. Two, three, four, five, six. Pin seven is going to yellow. Um, and did I do brown? I can't remember. I think I did brown, yeah. And blue. Blue's the only one I haven't done yet. Blue. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, eight. That's pin eight. So I am content that things are going to, through to the, the connector. I'm content that these wires are all going through to the connector. So from that perspective, I'm fairly happy, but it definitely doesn't match the... Uh, um, 
it definitely doesn't match what you're showing me there. So, I mean, even in that instance there, you, you've said gray is seven. See, I don't have a gray here. The colors I have are purple, blue, yellow, red, and brown. Actually, I didn't test purple, so let's do that now. Uh, purple, one, two, three, four, five. Purple is going to pin five. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is, yeah, violet. There you go. Uh, blue, eight. Okay, so. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, so Aaron, I'll, I'll do them all again. Uh, so that was, uh, violet was correct. So then I've got my white here. He already... Uh, is going to, white is going to pin one. Um, and then, uh, what's next? We've got red. Red is going to pin two. Yep, that's right. That's the same as what you've got there. And Brown? Did I do? I think I did. I did brown. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm confusing myself now. But let's just let's just do them. Brown. One, two, three, six, seven, eight. Hang on, I've missed one. I don't think I'm making proper contact here. What do you think? Get in there. Ah, oh, there we are. That's pin three. Three is brown. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, I don't have a, a three listed there, but never mind. So one, two, three. Three is on brown. And yellow. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight. Uh, I'm not making proper contact here, am I? Let's try again. Three, nope, oh. nope, oh. three, five, six, seven, pin seven. Yep, we did that, didn't we? Oh, you've got gray on that one. Never mind. All I care about is that we are getting continuity from here, and it is the same way as it was when it arrived. That's the important thing. As to whether it is correct um, to what you have there, there we go, that's pin two in red. Whether it's the same as what you have there, I'm not sure, but it is. I'm just looking at a, um, a photo here of, of the inside of one of these. And what I'm looking at, definitely the color scheme definitely matches what I'm looking at in this photo. So I'm content. I'm content. Um, all right. So I think at this stage, I'm going to wrap this up. I'll, well, I'll put this back together, I should say. I haven't decided whether I'm going to finish the stream yet. But I, um, I am reasonably content. I may still get an opportunity to test this with an actual apple. Uh, if I can get the old 2C together um, and working and operational and with a display and all those sorts of things, the things that we come to expect from a computer, unless of course you're dealing with an Altair where you wouldn't be looking at a screen. Yeah. Well, not with a base model anyway. All right, so that's there. Looking good. Let's put the top back on. Nice, delicious. And then, well, I had some screws for this, didn't I? Yep, here they are. There we go, hours of gaming fun yet to come. That's, uh, what are some of the good old Apple II games that people can remember? Ones that they, uh, for any of the Apple II users out there, what were some of the old Apple II games that you guys can remember and used to enjoy and all that sort of stuff? Oops, I don't know what I did there. Do do do. I'm way behind on the chat here. Sorry, I better go and do some catch up. Pac-Man. Yes, I think I played Pac-Man on the Apple II. The, 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 I think the ones I remember the best were Karateka. 
Ghostbusters. I I had a I had an animation thing or something. Uh, I can't remember what it was called. Load Runner. Oh, Mo do you remember Montezuma's Revenge? I like that one. Promise Jay promised I'd be going for five hours. <laughs> yes, good old Jay. Eh? Right, okay. Choplifter. Now, see, I don't... I guess I probably did play Choplifter on it because I remember playing Choplifter. But I don't specifically remember playing that on Apple II, but I probably did. At least five hours, he said. Well, what I am going to do, only because there's been the interest, there's certainly been some interest expressed. I'm going to put this... We'll get all this stuff back in the box. For Roman... And there, and he could have his extra, his spare switch back. Plonk that over there. I am actually going to pull out the 2C and we're going to have a look at it. See if we can at least get it to maybe beep or something. So let's just zoom this out a little bit. Not so far that we can see my gut, but far enough that I'll be able to see a 2C. There we go. Nearly at gut length there. Uh, crikey. Okay. What's that? Oh, wow. Found a container. Empty container. Ah. Ouchie, ouchie. Oh my god, this one is... This is the bad one, I think. It is a mess and a half. Far out. So where's the good one? <laughs> right. Ouchie. Oh man, this one is, is in a terrible state. been sitting there for such a long time. Terrible. I have to do something about this. This needs to be stored better. So, here is my 2C. No, it is not a 2C plus, it is just a 2C. Now, the way I managed to accidentally send uh, 12 volts through the 5 volt rail was through one of these, somehow or other. Not particularly impressive. And here's our floppy drive. And it, once again, I'm still not even sure if this is the good one or not. Is there meant to be something there? Character gen. Character generator. <laughs> okay, so unknown as to whether this is the good one or not. I guess one way to find out is to put some power in it and see if it makes a noise. Because they do make a noise when they start. They go beep. Zoom in on the RAM. Zoom. Zoom, zoom, zoom. It'd probably be easier for me to bring the RAM to you. Focus. Takes time, but it focuses. Uh, I'm not sure what you're specifically looking for, but you now have a closer view of the RAM. Right, so it is time for us to discover whether this remotely works. Uh, and whether it's the other one that actually works. So, grab my power supply. Oh, you come on. Come on. Oi, oi. Oi. Oh, actually, I think I'm pretty sure this is the bad one. Pretty sure this is the bad one. Yeah, this is the bad one. Why would I even? Yeah, no. No, not this one. Let's get the good one. Uh, and when I say good, I mean that in a kind of free speech kind of way. I'm not really convinced that it's good as such, just not as bad as the bad one. Uh, right. That's not a 2C. 2011 mine. Does this work? 2011 MacBook Pro. I wonder if it works. 
have a look inside. It looks all right. Whew. Eight gigs of RAM. One terabyte hard drive. I find it hard to believe I would have abandoned a 2011, because that'd be what, an i5? i3? I Sorry, I've just got distracted here for a minute. I'm just going to power this up and see if it works. Because if it works, um, I'm sure I can find a home for this. I think this is plugged in. Okay, I've got a green light on the charger. I've got no focus. It just started. Oh. I recognise that screen. That's um, Ubuntu. Yeah, yeah, let's see if Sean knows. Sean knows what the purple is. <laughs> okay, well, I have absolutely no idea why this computer is here, but there's clearly nothing wrong with this, and... I'm sure a 2011 would be of use to someone, so I'm going to have to find a new home for that. Might need a new battery, but... That is so bizarre. Why would I have put it there? Answer me that. No. Oh, okay. There we go. All right. Okay, so let's put that in the... Switch the multimeter off. Not going to be needing that. Let's put that in here in the uh, can't find anywhere where else for it pile, and then we'll get the good to see. The good to see. <coughs> Looks like some RAM out of a power book, doesn't it? Mm. Okay. So this, it has a lid, so don't freak out. It does have a lid. This is the good one. So let's see what happens when we power it on, shall we? I'll have a look at the chat first, but... Mm. Okay, we are connected to mains power. I'm not using an original power supply. I've just got one of these. Other power supplies. Um, oh, let me just check up the chat here, see if there's any important information here. Oh, Rudy's a retro Intel. Thank you for joining. Good night. Uh, an older Ubuntu. Yes, it's, I, I would have installed that a very long time ago. I dare say I was hanging on to that for a customer. Maybe. I'm sure I had him set up with an SSD for that one. I'm really confused. I'm really, really confused about that, that laptop. Um, anyhow, that's another story. Okay, so we're missing the button here. And I believe that I do have that somewhere. So we won't get too upset about that. Um, caps lock key. There's a caps lock key. Let's put that on. Hmm. Come on. Get in there. That one's there. God, these things are hard. The ones with the little metal flippy things, they have to be in a particular position. Exercise in frustration. Yeah, I think I've got it. Yeah, that's it. All right. Let's get rid of a little piece of metal here, because then never really a good idea to have floating pieces of metal inside. 
electronic devices. God, this looks like it's got rat poo in it. That's not what you want. Oh God, it does. Crikey. There's that other switch. Let's empty out the rat poo before we start it off. Get the vacuum cleaner later. Not ideal. So, what we can say now is the odds are against this one working. Won't completely rule it out, but I would not necessarily consider this one uh, in the best, having the best chances of working. There we go. It's going to need a good old clean. Going to give this some uh, a bit of TLC, I think. Bring them back, because especially seeing as I have a monitor for it. And once I have a monitor for it, I want to have this thing kind of set up. Um, so, most of the time in that spot over there, I just put things that are, that don't work anymore. Just stuff that's, uh, you know, that I need to, uh, that I'm using for, uh, for repairs and things like that. But, uh, this is the, one of the few things, apart from that laptop, which I'm not even sure how it got there in the first place, because I have no idea. I mean, that whole, that laptop is an enigma. I have no idea what the story is behind it. All right. Okay. Let's test this out, shall we? The dumbest power connector in the world. I'm going to switch it on and we'll see if we get any lights or if it blows up or something like that. So. Oh, right. Let me just scroll down. Yeah, okay. And, oh, I think I did that backwards. Oops. Yeah, that's better. Right, okay. Ready? Three, two, one. Green light. Floppy drive is not connected. Connect it. Get it together. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. I don't have any floppy disks to put in it, so. I mean, I dare say if I put a floppy disk in it, it would do something, but I do not have a floppy disk to put in it. Uh, I had some floating around somewhere, but I don't know where they've gone. Well, at least we've got a light. No beep, no floppy activity. Oh, okay, so I should be getting a beep, yeah? I'll tell you, the first thing I'm going to do with this board is I'm going to ultrasonic it because it is... Not good. And that switch keeps falling off. Volume control. Let's try turning it up, shall we? Volume control was all the way down. So that could explain why we didn't get a beep. Oh, hang on. I plugged it up. Unplugged it. it, it, it. Okay, I could hear the speaker give me a kind of a... Um, sounds like it has issues, but at least it powers on. Two seconds, built-in diagnostics. Drop the keyboard in the ultrasonic as well. Yeah, the keyboard definitely needs a clean. I probably won't drop it in the ultrasonic, but I will clean it. Just make sure all of the chippies are all... So there's, I, 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 you know, this is me actually being deliberately punished for what I said before when I said I have a 2C um, and it works. 
um, it's in, you know it's sort of uh, it's in storage and then I sort of laughed at myself saying come on you cannot possibly say that knowing what you know about vintage computers the chances of it still working are extremely slim and I was right Oops. okay well the 2C is going to be getting some TLC from me I'm going to clean this up not now but I'm going to pop this in the ultrasonic cleaner get it all nice and clean I'm going to take all of the chips out and reseat them uh, see if I can get it connected up to a screen. Let's, okay, this is just one last ditch thing. I'm gonna check and see if I've got one of those AV cables that plugs into the thing. So I will be back in about two minutes. And, well, it won't be that long actually. I'll be back in about one minute. I shall go and see if I have one of those AV cables. And if we do, we may even be able to see what this is outputting. T -t 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 -ting. Hang on. Yep, video out, okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Okay. Give me, give me a minute. Cables are just over there and I'll see what I've got back in a second. Hello and welcome back for the second time today. <coughs> um, found a couple of cables. I think I'll have a better chance with this one. This one's got sound and video. Uh, let's just see this one. It looks like it's never, ever been used. So let's pop that in there. Connect to Rooney. Switch that on, and let's go. Source will be AV1, I guess. Where's AV2? There's an AV2. How is there even an AV2? VGA, HDMI, AV1. Let's try AV1. Okay. Oh, switched off. Why'd you switch off? Switch off. On. Oh, well, that's promising because that's me actually getting a video signal. So I actually consider that a really good thing. How's, uh, How's everyone's 2C diagnostic skills here in the chat? Hmm? 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 We think that's bad RAM? Well, the good thing is that I do, as I say, have another 2C. Actually, 
This might even use some RAM that I've already got, so I might even be able... This RAM's still available, isn't it? You can still buy this stuff. Um, oh. Bump. If memory serves, holds both Apple keys on, uh, on power on, the diode and I'm sure it will help. Okay, I'll, I'll do that. Too far gone. It looks a lot like bad RAM, most likely to be. Yep, cool. Oh, something changed. See that? Anyone see that? It changed. Definitely changed. It's having a good old think about something. Well, well that, though some people may not, I actually see that as a really good thing. I like it because the computer is pretty much telling me where the problem is. So we are we're looking good. So I'm going to just have a quick look under the microscope for the type of RAM that it is. Because that will, I may or may not actually have some. And I am, of course, as I mentioned before, I am going to clean this board. Who knows? We might even, we might even make it happy just from a good old, you know, sort of sink in the ultrasonic. This one will have to go in the big one. But we have got... This is me cleaning the ramp studiously cleaning around. And then I'm going to do a little bit of the old uh, wizard repair um, or magic repair, depending on how you want to call it. That's the repair where you don't actually do anything. You push and poke and, po poke and prod and, uh, and then you just hope that it's magically going to work again. We've all done it. I'm sure we've all done it. You've opened something up, you've gone to have a look at it, and you go, oh, geez, I, I don't know, I can't actually see anything wrong with this. But you still put it back together and try it again, because you never know, you might have just fixed something by pulling it apart and waving your hands over it. Can't find my little thing. Never mind. I challenge anyone to say they've never done that. I feel like I should start singing uh, Strangers in the Night with Dooby Dooby Doo like uh, Joe does on his live streams. Dooby Dooby Doo. No, I better not do that. That's his thing. Can't be going around stealing stuff like that. me just giving the I'm just giving these ones that are in a socket a wiggle we all know that with these old older computers that sockets can end up being a problem um, and let's just have a look and see what sort of RAM this is what is that I know what that is yep okay it is you... and we're going here to microscope there we go so it is MB8264-15. Um, so there you go. So how much does each one of these chips hold? I don't even know how much RAM this thing has. Does anyone know how much RAM a 2C has? A 2C has? I see it, certainly don't know. I am not the uh, expert. But... Uh, I mean, I would gladly replace all of these to get it going, but uh, once again, I'm sure they're still available. Um, 4164. Okay. I may even have some of those. So that means... The joystick has bad RAM. Yes, the joystick has bad RAM. Um, 
I have never done a wizard repair, and that is uh, a classic House of Moth lie, because we even got to see him do one in a live stream. Each chip holds, well, so hey, that's about, what, 64 kilobytes, so. Sorry, not that much. 64K chips times eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. There are 16, so that means I guess it must be uh, 32. Two banks, what? That machine has 16 chips, each with 64K, no, 65 bits. So that's bits is, is we have to then, if we're working out bits, we've got to then divide it by eight, yeah? Um, for eight bit bytes. Eight ganged together for 64K main RAM and another eight R auxiliary RAM. Cool. It's all complicated, isn't it? Bank zero has to work and bank one can't have any shorts. Okay, all right. Okay, so what did we say it was 4164? That was what we were all saying, 4164. Let's see if I have any of those. Because you never know. You never know. I mean, I don't think I do, but I will check. Ah, oh, crap. Where do you reckon they are? Anyone? Anyone? Ah. Oh. Not there. Not there. Not there. I've got a, a one of my containers with all the RAM in it, but. I didn't do anything clever like actually label it and say, here's all your RAM. So, ugh, it's just in one of these. So I'm not a smart man. not there. I'm almost certain it's not there. I had to uh, do a slight reshuffle in here recently. Oh, it was here all along, dumbass. So if it's going to be anywhere, it'll be here. Four, one, six, four. That's what you said, wasn't it? 4164? Um, so, just before I go in and start doing all sorts of weird stuff, can someone please confirm that 4164 is what I need to replace it with? Oh, cool. So I have... I need to get more because I'm nearly out. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of them. So, all right, now here is the tricky bit. I don't have enough to replace all of them. How do I know which ones are gone? Huh? Huh? How? This is where I need the Apple II experts. I need to, because, uh, you know, this is definitely not my area of expertise. Ironically, I used to know an awful lot about Apple IIs back in the day, because that was what I used to use. I used to have an Apple IIe at home uh, with a, a hard drive. And I did most of my learning to program on that in, uh, in Apple Basic. So, uh, but I've forgotten just about everything. Getting different patterns each time. That's that's comforting. I like getting different patterns. So let's have a look here. I only need to work in the bank zero. Okay, I do have eight. Yes. Uh, you can try piggybacking over with a known good chip. Oh wow. Only ones that make so bank zero. You said so that's zero. Okay, cool. What? Hang on. 
Emma, Emma, Emma. Okay, so that's ARD7. So this doesn't have anything labelled about banks. So would I be correct in saying that... Oh, hang on. Change views. Top view. So this, these ones here, these are bank zero. Or would I be correct in saying that? And these are bank one. Um, because as I say, they're not actually labelled thusly. I love the idea of piggybacking over the, over the top. Never done anything like that before, because that's not the sort of work, computers I normally work on. But I like it. I wonder if you could make decent enough contact just pushing it on like that. So, can Bruce get 16 chips off the board in under three minutes? <laughs> You know, when it comes to removing through-hole components, the thing that makes the biggest difference in terms of how easily you're going to get them off is how big the holes are in relation to the pin. If it's a really tight fit, it's a, if it's a really snug fit, uh, they're really, really difficult because it's hard to use the suctioning thing because there's nowhere for air to pass through to then suck the stuff out. If there's a decent sized hole in relation to the size of the pin, you can often do fairly well. Um, Schematic, I, I keep, I'm not ready for a schematic. It's way too early for that. Um, so. So, okay, so bank zero here. I am getting that correct. So, what I'm going to do, we're going to try this piggyback thing <laughs> without any solder. I don't know. I don't know if it'll work, but we'll try it. We're making pretty decent contact there. There we go. There's piggyback on one. I swear, if, if, if we get it working through this, it would be a darn miracle. Oh, stay on. Oh, there you are on. Okay. On. Nope. Nope. Because I'm still not entirely convinced um, that uh, that it isn't just something that needs a really bloody good clean, given the condition that it was in with mouse poo and everything, wasn't it? I did have a bit of a mouse problem in here for a little while there. It's resolved now, but. This is fun. I wish the screen wouldn't keep switching off. It's the urine that's the issue. Okay. I don't see a lot of rat urine here, but, you know, who knows? Maybe rat urine or mouse urine is invisible. So I've mentioned before, I... Actually, as I mentioned before, I don't... Um, I generally don't ultrasonically clean while I'm uh, live streaming because... It just makes such a horrible noise. It's very hard for me to concentrate. More well, useful to piggyback eight chips simultaneously. But I'm, I'm hoping that it's just one. I'm hoping that it's just one chip. It's just one single chip giving me grief. That's the hope. And I mean, there's this MMU chip. I mean, maybe it's that. It's not looking too good either. I owe you. Why? How much? How much do you owe me? Oh, shit! <laughs> oh, dear. <clears throat> Did anyone hear that? <laughs> that really caught me off guard. <sighs> Sorry to any youngsters listening. Just 
feel like um, I just definitely feel like I'm making some gradual progress. <laughs> uh, if you get characters on the screen, you're doing better. Good. Well, I have got characters. They are characters. They are all weird characters, but they're all characters. So that tells us that that one. farted when I pressed it that time. Oh, look at that. I can actually make out characters. So delicious. So, okay, quick question. It's, it's trying to do stuff. Quick question. Should I just replace that one? Is it because this is piggybacking and not making proper contact or is it likely that there's another chip that's not working? So would you suggest at this stage the best thing to do is just whip that chip out and replace it with this one, lickety split, and maybe with a bit of proper soldering it will work better. That's, that's, that's my question. Scarlet Swordfish, hello, goodness me. You're supposed to beat when you swim in the fire. See, look at that. I'm getting very different things each time. I'm loving it. Loving it. It could be both or either. So, all right, let's get another one. Because we don't do anything half-assed here at Brankus. No one believes that, do they? All right, so let's start again from one. Oh, this chip looks a little bit manky. I'll try another one. These are NEC chips. Incidentally, these are the same chips that are in a uh, Macintosh 128K. Uh, who also, they fail in those as well. So, uh, it's nice that I can buy these chips that serve two different masters. Right, then we'll start from one again. Or zero, because we're talking about computers here. Like Steve Jobs, employee number zero. Okay, so we've got zero. Again, every time I switch this on, I get a different pattern. It's nice, it, it, it's, it, it provides freshness to the live stream. Piggyback. Piggyback. Oopsie. Piggyback. There we go. Okay. Still the same. Still the same. Because we are getting characters, and that, that, that is really promising, because it means a lot of things are actually working in order for me to be getting characters on the screen. Jump across. This one keeps getting bent out. In. There we go. Okay. Stop it. Oh, stop it. Just stop. Okay. There we go. Are you making proper contact there? I don't know. It's certainly not perfect doing this piggybacking thing. Okay, that one's steady now. It's not flickering. I'm going to switch it off and on again.
Yeah, see, it's not doing all the flickery stuff anymore. It's now giving me a solid display. So that one, I might leave that one there as well. I really don't enjoy uh, removing um, these sorts of ICs. It's not a fun thing. Ugh. NFTs. I'm sorry. I'm. I'm. I apologise if I'm. I don't get it. If I am like maybe just too old to grasp the concept, but I do kind of find the concept of an NFT um, freaking stupid. Okay. That's now. Oh, look at one of them's an NAC and two of them are uh, Texas Instruments. How about that? But they are. Wow. 4164. 4164, yes, they're both 4164s. We're going back to flickering again. I am. Uh, Probably just going to go and replace all of them. But wouldn't it, wouldn't it be cool if we actually got it to to fire up today? Yeah? With piggybacked ICs. Oh, super chat. Ron. Hey, Ron. I've converted all my retirement savings into NFTs. <laughs> Newt's frogs and toads. Hey. Can someone tell me what an NFT is? I'm assuming that I've got the right thing. It's meant to be a digital file that is unique. So it, the idea is that if you get hold of this digital file, no one else can have it. It's yours. You know, it can't be copied. So it's essentially like saying, you know, it's like buying a priceless artwork or something like that. And you say, well, I've got the artwork. I can see the paint strokes on it. It's mine. It's I have the original uh, or something like that. The idea is that they produce these digital files, but they put a limited number on them and they have some sort of digital protection on them so that you can't have more than one. If I'm getting it right, I could well have the completely wrong thing all together and I may be talking absolute garbage out of my rear end and saying the wrong thing and thinking about something else and maybe it is all about newts frogs and toads um, but uh, that's that's if that's what I have in my head and that vast expanse in my head <laughs> right, okay, so we've got four piggybacks at the moment. And we're still going to Flickridge. Can we copy? You just have a hash in a blockchain that says you're the official owner. Oh, great. That's uh, awesome. <laughs> Although I have many for sale, please contact me. Yeah. Okay, so here's where I sort of, here's where I feel I am at the moment. Um, I feel like I'm making progress with the, uh, the chips, but I also feel like I'm, I'm not... 100% happy with the whole piggyback side of things. Um, the fact that we did see some change in progress when I piggybacked one of those is a promising sign and does definitely point towards that RAM. So here's what I'm going to do. Because 
Uh, we're at the two hour mark and I do actually have lots of other things to do today. I am going to finish it off. My apologies, Jay. I know you are hoping for a five plus hour stream. That is unfortunately, you are barking up the wrong Mac Yak tree with that one. I, I am not the person for that. I'm little Mr. Mr. Two Hours. So I am going to be finishing it off. Um, so I am going to... Piggyback works with, only, with just one bad chip. Now he tells me. Um, okay... My rage is blowing gauges. Okay, so what I'm going to do now... Oh, which one? It was this one. It was... The one that was giving me the most grief was number four. That was the one where we saw a fairly immediate change. We started actually getting characters appearing on screen. It was number four. So, step number one. Replace four, because we're pretty darn sure he's gone. Um, then the next step will be um, to drop this in the ultrasonic cleaner and see what happens after it has a good clean. Um, I mean, to have got such a definitive difference with four does make me think there is a problem with four. So I don't think I'm being too rash replacing it. And I know I can be a little bit rash at times. These things are in well, aren't they? And they're certainly not going to fall out. Is it going to come out now? Nope, still more. Yep, another one here. Crikey. I wanted them to be solid. Oh, here's another one. Oh, and here's another one. How many friggin' screws in this thing? Mud. Another one. Okay. Oops. Something just fell down. Oh, it's one of those little... Oh, it's those things, those little metal thing, grounding things for the floppy drive. I'll be able to find that on the floor. That's fine. Okay, so... One, two, three, four, no, four. It's the fifth one because they start at zero. And that is these. So I'm going to get myself a little marker. And I'm going to just draw a line down here. So I know on either side of that. <sighs> yes, Ron, we would love to have you back on the show. You are always a good giggle. We definitely do have our regulars on the show when it comes to the guests on Mac Yak. Apologies to everyone who, uh, who was hoping there would be a Mac Yak last week and there wasn't. Uh, uh, it basically started with the fact that I couldn't be on the show, Steve couldn't be on the show. Um, we had no topics. And we just thought, well, what are we going to do here, guys? And Jay had had uh, other things to do, so... Yes, I, I am only one person, so I cannot speak for everyone. But I would be really surprised if the guys didn't want you back on. So, these are actually... Look how big these bloody holes are. Compared to the size of the pins, these are an absolute dream to undo. Don't you say it, Jay. I know you want to say it. Uh, and you might be saying, why aren't I using the sucker machine? Well, because I've got to wait for the thing to heat up. The other thing is, that see how all these pins are bent over? The, the um machine, the solder sucker, doesn't it's, it's a bit of a pain when the pins are bent over. You kind of need to have the pins up straight. Up straight. Up straight. 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 Someone has just started a noisy car.
So, I mean, I know I said I was going to stop, but I just thought to myself, I really want to know what it's going to be like to remove one of these chips. Is it going to be a nightmare? Or will it be not so bad? And at this stage, it's looking not so bad. It's a not so bad. It's a not so place. I shut up your face. So, Sing, if you're going to be on the show, Ron, uh, we're going to put it on you this time. What topics are we doing? Actually, that's a really good idea. Why don't we just, every time we get a guest on, and then make them come up with the topics? It'll save us so much hassle. So I'm going to come at this from the other side now, um, just to see if there's any solder uh, on the outside of the pins. Soak that up as well. I think we're heading towards me, maybe not today, but at some stage, testing that joystick. What do you think? I feel like it's on the cards. Now, there is another way you can get these sorts of ICs off. Um, well, there are a couple of things. First of all, you can look at using things like solder needles, which I did on my um, my stream before, and that's where you have... Because um, the thing is, I can't remove this chip yet because it's... Uh, uh, I might even be able to next size up. It's still got enough solder holding it on that I, I just would not be able to get rid of it. No, that's too big. So we're down to the one mil. And so what I have here is I have a solder needle, which I demonstrated last time. And what you can do with these is you can kind of heat heat this up, heat this, this hole up, and then you push the needle through and it pushes the solder out of the way. The solder won't adhere to the needle because the needle is made out of stainless steel. So you can do that. Uh, you can try and get your way through with those. But there is what I consider to be a much easier way to remove a chip like this. Because what you do is it, you... Start, the white balance is out on my camera, isn't it? Look how blue it is. By the way, Joe, Joe, I want to mention this to you because you were doing a live stream the other day and I noticed that the colours were a bit out on your camera. If you're using the same camera as me, they have a white balance in them and you have the option to do white balance. If you go into the settings, you can go in white balance... Um, just auto white balance or the other one is white balance when you switch it on. Now I'm going to just demonstrate something here really quickly. I have it set on white balance when you switch it on. So what you do is you get something white, switch the camera off, switch the camera back on again. At the time it comes on it does a white balance. So it's doing it now, if it's working, yeah there we go. And now that white is balanced and it will stay balanced and as you can see that board looks green now not blue. Um, if you have it on auto white balance, what it does is it's trying to white balance all the time. And the problem with that is that when you put something like this under the board where it's all green, it's trying to do a white balance off something that is just solidly green. So uh, just there, Joe's probably not even listening anymore. But if you are listening, um, yeah, that's, that's what I would suggest. So when it comes to removing um, uh, a chip like this, one way you can make your life a little bit easier if you don't care what happens to the original chip you can just sort of snip these pins eh. and then we well it's coming off now anyway and then um and then you can then just deal with removing one pin at a time rather than trying to remove the whole thing at once but it looks like this is coming out now anyway 
Let's just try. Where are we? Where are we? Miles away. There we are. So. Snip. So we need that are stuck behind. There we go. And then we can just remove them on their own. Much, much easier. Just grab some tweezers on the soldering iron and then just pluck them out one at a time. Now, admittedly, this is one of the easiest chip removals I've ever done because this is an older device. They're using these great big holes here. And they don't do that with the more modern stuff. The hole's only just big enough for the pin to go through. Still got some people watching. I thought everyone would have gone by now, but uh, it's nice. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to have to go soon because I'm hungry. I'm going to put this chip on, just this one chip, and then I'm going to we'll fire it up, and then we'll um, call it a day. And then I'll probably just work my way through finding out where the other problems are. But feeling good about it. Yeah. Yeah. And these are so dirty. I do think that ultrasonic might help. Socket. Bang. Have a go at this guy. Have a go at this guy, reminding me not to be stupid. Good. Thomas, you're a legend. Okay. One socket. Now, this is the little trick that I saw. Uh, it's, uh, it's a nice little soldery type trick, and this is one that I was watching Joe do the other day as well. It is where you bend a couple of pins, just two pins. Just two pins to hold the thingy in place, but you don't solder the bent pins, you solder unbent pins. And then you unbend the bent pins before you solder them. That way you solder the thing on without any bent pins. So, here's one, one. See so my comment about the ultrasonic removing the silk screen on my 2C board. No, I did not see that one. I'll be very interested to see whether that happens on mine as well. I might take a photo of it before I pop it in there. Uh, incidentally, it's worth mentioning, because a lot of people, uh, well, not a lot of people, I have seen people post on social media before um, there's more than that. I mean, I've, uh, my life is is made up of more than just people social media posting. But I saw people social media posting once about these ripples. See these ripples on the traces here? So you've got the copper going underneath and you've got these little wobbly things going on top. And people saying, oh, you know, I've just opened up my old computer and look, it's like that. Is there something wrong? And it's, there isn't something wrong. Um, I don't know what particular part of the original manufacturing process did that, but if you open computers, if you look at computers of a particular vintage, like let's say, I don't know, like a VIC-20 or Commodore 64 or something like that, some of the early 80s micros around this time, you will see that rippling. Uh, it was obviously just part of the manufacture. It doesn't happen anymore. You won't see that on modern boards. You won't even see it on like 
you know, sort of Macintosh boards, really. But prior to that, whatever process they were using did give those little ripples. And I don't know why, but it's quite, quite common. Um, one of my first computers was a computer called the VZ200, which was a rebranded Laser 200. Um, and uh, it has that rippling all the way through it. All right, so thankfully I have a socket. I can now put that there. New chip into the socket. Ah, all the old masks do that from Wave Solar. Hmm. Just checking. Just checking. All right. All right. So let's uh, pop this on. See what it does. I'm not going to replace any more, I promise. This will be the last, but I just wanted to, I just wanted to get a feel for that, see what it was going to be like. Um, and, uh, and then we'll see whether that actually makes a difference. Thank you. Thank you. Pretty floaty, isn't it? Uh, so we've got our little power supply. It just, it, I don't know, there's, someone might be able to explain it to me. Why does this have a power supply internal and external? It's got a power supply inside, right? But it, it, it's not like it takes mains voltage. You have to give it 18 volts. So it's got a power supply on the outside and a power, power supply on the inside. They couldn't fit it in there with the tech at the time. Well, should have just been all outside or all inside. But this half and half thing, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Wait, wait, wait. Um, screen. Okie dokie. Groin. And then we need some power. So, all we have done is replace one IC. We don't think that's going to be the fix to the problem, but it hopefully will we'll get that what we had before where we're getting the characters on the screen. This will now work 100% guaranteed. Mm, maybe not. See, I'm not even getting the beep anymore. Did I replace the wrong one? I am getting characters, but I'm not getting a beep anymore. Oh, did I? Yeah, no, I did plug the speaker in. I was going to say, maybe I didn't plug the speaker in. No, I did plug the speaker in. And I did hear it pop. So, um... Down you go. Okay, cool. Now we're in. So... So we've lost the beep, but we've, we've, we have made some progress, I guess. So I guess the trick is now, I have to go through... And, whoops, I have to go through and just need to make sure that I did actually replace the right one. Because I could have done something really stupid and not replace the right one. Yep, same. Piggybacking. I'm annoyed that I'm not getting a beep anymore. I really enjoyed the beep. The beep filled my heart with joy. Yep. You know what it could be? I wouldn't rule out. I wouldn't rule out that one of these chips is actually gone. I mean, these are new old stock chips, so they could be stuffed as well. 
So I might have just gone and replaced this with a dead chip. But either way, this is going to mean the end of this live stream and hanging out with all you wonderful folks. I replaced a, I think I replaced a bad chip with a bad chip. I didn't really label it, did I? So I've got my beep back, but I've got weird, still, you know, I've got artifacts and stuff. So, uh, where's my bloody IC remover? Here we go. Okay, so I'm just gonna try this one. Because I'm not, I'm just not recording what's going on here. Okay, that beeps. Good. So we'll consider that one a happy chip. Try this one. No beep. So I think we consider that one a dead chip. So we're going to put him in the dead chip. Oh, crap, he's just falling down. And we've got another one here. That one's not happy either. It does um, make your life interesting if you are dealing with um, your, you know, new replacements are dead as well. Uh, you'll not get a sworn, it will go into self-test. Okay. All right, so we'll plug the keyboard in. these two buttons down is that something that I need to do you need a 4164 tester yes I do okay so that's going into the self test right so we are getting different behavior based on whether the keyboard's plugged in or not yeah okay cool that's a good sign I, they, I'm, they're all they're all good signs and I clearly need to buy myself a lot more 4164s because And when you've got ones that you're not even sure about. See the way I just keep going every time I say I'm going to stop? It's lovely and solid, that. I think I've gone off the edge there. We have. We'll start with one of these earlier ones. <laughs> Let it finish. <laughs> okay. All right. I promise. I'm near. I, I promise. It's just about finished. This is a wonderful voyage of discovery. I have enjoyed this. I have enjoyed doing this, and I thank everyone who's been offering their uh, their help and everything while I do this. Um, but now. Close your eyes. No. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Off, off, off. Right. Okay. Into the old sign off view. There we go. Alrighty. Well, folks, thank you very much for joining. I do appreciate you hanging around for the uh, duration of this live stream. I know it got a little bit tedious towards the end there, but progress is being made, so. 
can't really complain about that. I'm gonna chuck it into the ultrasonic cleaner and if it just starts magically working after that, I'll do a post on Facebook. I don't expect it to. I think there's gonna be a little bit more work needs to be done. And I may turn that into my next live stream and I'll invite all of my other 2E folks along that they can help me out and figure out what the problem is. Um, so, <laughs> Uh, Jeff Bernard, did I say hello to you? I'm not sure I did. If I didn't, hello. Um, so, uh, yeah, once again, thank you. Thanks for keeping me company. Thanks for all the super chats. Uh, thanks for the help that I got from a lot of people. Uh, it looks like at some stage I may even actually get to test this uh, uh, joystick that I was working on today because um, this is all looking reasonably promising. Um, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, whatever it happens to be in your part of the world. And hang on. Hang on. Joe and Adam was saying, if you let the self-test finish, it will tell you exactly which chips are bad. No. Really? Even with that yucky screen? All right, okay. Goodness me. I was just in the middle of saying goodbye to everyone. Okay. We're doing it. See, this is the problem when the chat starts zooming by like that, and in particular while I'm focusing on other things as well. Okay, this is the self-test. Self-testing. Go back to the top view. Just for everyone who's there screaming at the screen, saying, let it finish. Uh, top view, top view, top view. Top view. How will I know when it's finished? Oh, it bit. I feel like it probably has finished and I feel like it probably is telling me what the problem is right now, but I just can't see it. So, unhook keyboard. Um, okay. I will unhook keyboard. Uh, as I say, I, I suspect that it, it probably is telling me what the problem is, but uh, it can't output what's wrong with it. Because I was just doing the self-test then, and uh, it got to the end and did a little bip. Do a little bip. Just a, a quaint little beep, but then I couldn't see anything. <laughs> Four more hours, no. Yep, okay. So I think we can fairly safely say that was it doing the self-test and then reporting on the problem. Right now it's reporting on the problem. And as you can see, that's not in, well, it's certainly not in language, language I understand. Maybe it's one of those I ones. Those, you know, what are they, what are they, those, what do they used to call them? Magic eye. It's a magic eye 3D thing. And if you look, if you focus over here, I can make out a pattern. Uh, it's a bunny rabbit. Yeah, it's a bunny rabbit. Oh, wow. That's so cool. So, back to the drawing board. Um, right, so, yeah, bad RAM. <laughs> All right, okay, I will continue with this. I'm going to just continue replacing the RAM in this. It's not that hard to take those chips out, so I will do that, but I just won't be doing it on a live stream. So, as I was saying before, thank you to everyone. Thank you for keeping me company. I do appreciate it. I'll be trying to live stream again next weekend. I uh, hope you can make it. And um, thanks for watching. Stay cool and have a good time. Bye. <laughs>